Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman with Nerd on the Street, and today we are taking a look at Solus 3 with the budgie desktop environment. Alright everyone, so I mentioned in my last video, my last techie video, that I was installing that SSD in my desktop computer, that I was excited to try out Solus. Solus is a relatively new Linux distribution, but it's been out for a while and I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet. And I was planning to put it on my desktop, I've been having some unrelated issues with the desktop, so I decided I'm just going to throw it on a virtual machine just so I can see what Budgie is, because I've never used Budgie before, I was kind of trying to wait until it got changed over to Qt, because right now it's written in GTK, but you know, I'd still like to see what it's all about. So, uh, without further ado, we're just going to put our headphones on here, and I'm going to power up a virtual machine. Alright. Okay. Got a little error with my virtual box here, but looks like we're all good. So we're just going to start up Solus, and we're basically just going to install it, and I'm going to take a look around, see if I can disable mouse pointer integration here. No mouse integration, please. All right. So here is Solus. We'll try and get this uh, up at a higher resolution here in a moment. So it looks like it got networking in VirtualBox automatically. So this is VirtualBox. Things might be a little bit slower, although this is actually working very well for a virtual machine. So down here at the bottom uh, bottom left, I just found the menu, and it opens up very quickly, quicker than a, a no menu I would expect to. We're just going to search Display. Let's go here, and can we adjust our resolution? And this might have to do with VirtualBox. All right, so this is the highest resolution we can get right now. We'll go ahead and install with this resolution, and then we'll see if, uh, if it lets us bring that up after we're done installing. But we'll go ahead and double click the install OS icon on the desktop. So um, Budgie, actually, I thought it was more of a power user type interface because of this thing. It's got the sidebar. We'll take more of a look at that in a moment. Um, but yeah, this is actually very beginner friendly. Uh, it looks pretty similar to the Windows 7 taskbar with the menu at the bottom left and then icons pinned and then the notification center over on the right. So much more beginner friendly than I would have thought actually. Uh, we're going to click English United States. Um, see if they can find our location automatically. Yep, they got it. English US, Chicago time zone. And we're in VirtualBox, so we can just use the entire hard drive. Although, if I did want to do something, uh, let's see, assign mount points to partitions you have previously created. All right. So, if I was installing this on one of my actual physical computers, I would probably want to have slash on an SSD and then slash home on a hard drive. So, let's see, does this come with any... Yes, this comes with Gparted. So, it looks like the installer itself does not let you... Um, change partitions, but if you do want to set up custom partitions, you can open up Gparted, do it here, and then it looks like you can assign mount points in the installer once you've done that. So I'm okay with that. It's better than not being able to do it at all. I'm glad they shipped Gparted as part of the live ISO. We're going to do automatic partitioning though, since like I said, we're in a virtual machine. Um, no need for fancy partition things or security things, once again, just a virtual machine. Hostname Solus VM and install the bootloader, we probably should. Host names must be lowercase, all right. So uh, instead of just making it lowercase, it's telling me I have to change what I've typed. Um, so that's an interesting design choice, but we'll go ahead and comply, I guess. All right, next, and username, Jacob. Let's see, I bet if I put, yeah, if I put capitals in my username, once again, it doesn't change it, it just tells me it's wrong. Real name, Jacob Kaufman, and password, Right. This user should have administrative capabilities. Yeah, so that would be sudo privileges probably. Oh, and it doesn't even let me change that. Looks like you can add more than one user at a time and then some of them cannot be administrators. So that could be handy if you're setting a computer up, you already know that you're going to set up multiple users. That's kind of cool. Review all your options. All right, and we'll go ahead and click install. Do we wish to install? Yes. This is a, a pretty nice installer. I have not used um, I actually haven't used a graphical installer in some time because the last couple of installations I performed have been Arch. I guess I've installed Fedora fairly recently. Um, this installer is definitely a lot nicer than Fedora, is a lot faster. Um, so it's just copying a bunch of files over 
from the live ISO to the hard drive at this point, as we can tell down here by the VirtualBox indicators. But yeah, very nice installer. It looks very nice as well. It's got this kind of, it's got a box shadow on the right side of its sidebar there. It was very linear. I don't like the Fedora and Red Hat installers, CentOS installer, um, because it's not linear. Like it's just got a bunch of icons you can click on in whatever order you want. I prefer it if the installer actually walks me through the process. I think the nonlinear thing is interesting, but it's not as, as easy or nice to use, I don't think. Um, but yeah, this is installing. So it looks like we got Firefox pre-installed here, um, Hexchat for IM, GNOME MPV. Now I haven't used GNOME MPV before. I've got regular old MPV installed on my KDE machine. Clicking on GNOME MPV does nothing. Oh, nope, it does bring something up. All right, so this is interesting. This is actually a GUI wrapper around MPV. Of course, I'm not going to install GNOME MPV on KDE. It would probably look like crap. But um, you can select your video, audio, subtitle tracks. Like, these are things that in regular old MPV, which I can actually open up here on my host machine, regular old MPV, just drop a file if you want to play it. And then once you drop a file, um, there's very little interface there. I've customized my interface a little bit but only to make it look nicer, not to actually add any functionality. GNOME MPV actually adds some VLC-like functionality, which MPV has built in, but you just need to memorize the shortcuts for it, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, GNOME MPV actually gives you a menu for those, and then this would be the open, open box. You can open up a stream as well with it. That's pretty neat. All right, if I used GNOME, I would probably use GNOME MPV as well. Of course, I don't use GNOME, so I don't use GNOME MPV. And the copying looks like it's getting close to being finished. I've gotten better at these installation videos. Um, you know, I, I can banter long enough to actually get the progress bar most of the way done. We've also got Rhythmbox installed, it looks like. That's interesting. I wonder if there are any plugins installed by default, because I know Ubuntu is going to be shipping some plugins by default with its. Um, all right, this is not what I thought that Rhythmbox looked like, so there are probably some plugins, if not just a very nice GTK theme. I really do like this theme. Um, a lot better than the gnome theme at least. It looks kind of like, um, looks kind of like flat, I, I don't remember what the theme was called, but it looks like a really popular Numix. It looks like Numix, which was a flat theme for gnome uh, that I used back when I did use gnome. Sometimes I use Numix, sometimes I use just vanilla, but this looks very similar. So if we go to, let's see, where's our, where's our preferences again? I, I saw a preferences button, I just, I opened it up a moment ago and now I'm not seeing it anymore oh no that was what I opened up that's not preferences let's see ah that's the menu is the icon in the top left alright see with KDE that icon in the top left just lets you like move your window around which is what you get if you right click your window in GNOME um, but yeah the actual icon in the top left is apparently the menu button now in GNOME or at least in Budgie. I was not aware of that. Yeah, this is Budgie I'm using. It's based on GNOME, like I said. Loosely, uh, but it uses GTK. All right, is this thing finished back here? Oh, that wasn't what I meant to do. Is this installer? Yep, installer is finished. We're going to go ahead and restart before we continue screwing around with things um, to see if we can get a better resolution. So this is the automatic boot. That might just be the ISO. Yeah, that's the ISO coming in again. So it did not prompt me to remove the CD. I'm going to go ahead and just eject the CD. Force unmount. All right. And of course, that screws everything up. So we're going to reset the computer. You can do this kind of thing with a virtual machine. I wouldn't do that with a physical computer. We'll enter Solus. So now we got a grub machine. So yeah, it's interesting. It did not prompt me to remove the installation media, probably because it assumes you're booting from like a USB drive or something, but I don't know. All right. And okay, this is LightDM, which is the desktop manager Ubuntu used to use. Um, it still uses right now for about another month. We'll go ahead and log in here. I like LightDM. It's one of my favorite login screens uh, with that configuration that it has. And we've just got a mouse. Okay, and here we've got Budgie. So okay that software center now has replaced or maybe that was there before but we don't have the installer icon on the desktop anymore obviously open immediately upon installing security updates available um, open up software center here discombobulate alright 
required updates. So this is sectioned into three sections, which is kind of like what Linux Mint does, but people hated it um, for doing this. But we've got required updates, mandatory, and will be selected automatically. Not sure how I feel about required updates. I don't know how I feel about that. But we got security updates, which are incidentally not required. We'll go ahead and select those as well. And then other updates, um, like Firefox is in there, things like that. And what version of Firefox is on this ISO that I downloaded? This virtual machine has 4 gigs of memory, by the way. 4 gigs of RAM, so I'm not starving it for resources here. Um, how do I see the freaking about? All right, so it did come with Firefox 55, so this is just a minor Firefox update that is not listed under security, but we're going to install all of our updates because that's what I do. This is a rolling release distribution, by the way. That's one of the cool things about Solus. Um, one of the not-so-cool things about it is that it, the packages from what I can tell are super locked down one person controls just about all the packages but it is rolling release so um, what packages you do have you should get updates to relatively quickly alright and we are downloading those now while that's going I am going to open up displays see if we can get this resolution a little bit higher for the video here unknown display not I, I really I'm not sure how I feel about well I know how I feel about it I don't like this um, this display control panel here I think they've made it better in the next GNOME release and this look, just looks like the GNOME control panel so they should get that improvement all right yeah nothing there all right so I should probably have to install VirtualBox something or other let's see can we search VirtualBox the I all right well VirtualBox isn't even in the repo all right so this is what I'm talking about you know um, you can get VirtualBox easily on Arch you can get VirtualBox very easily even on Ubuntu um, on Fedora I think even it's in the repos I would have to check to be sure but yeah VirtualBox is is open source is VirtualBox Libre let's do about VirtualBox well it doesn't say if it's Libre in the about box but but yeah you if if VirtualBox is not in the repo then um, you know, the repo is probably missing a couple things. So we'll go ahead and install guest additions manually then. Alright, gotta download the guest additions ISO. So that's going, and we're still downloading our updates here. It's not really any way to get detailed progress about what we're doing, is there? So there's no virtual box. Is there like Nibbles? That's a, a GNOME game? Oh, yeah, that's. All right, so GNOME games are in the repos, just not. I really am surprised. VirtualBox, GNOME boxes is in here. All right, so typical GNOME folks. Um, I guess we got we got Virtual Machine Manager as well, which is ugly, but uh, you can get GNOME boxes if you want to install virtual machines. Um, I guess that's their officially recommended way to do things. Of course, VirtualBox is. I don't know. I I prefer VirtualBox. Yes, insert. Typical GNOME people not wanting to give users a choice over which software they're using, just wanting users to use all GNOME software. Um, but yeah, that that is interesting. Can we close this this software center? Yeah, we can X out of that, and the updates I assume are still applying somewhere. If I open this back up, I mean that would just be awful. If uh, wow, did that actually interrupt the updates? Closing the software center. It didn't even prompt me if I wanted to close it or not after I clicked X. We're stuck on discombobulating update matrix now. All right. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so Software Center's got some some quirks. We got budgie settings, which looks kind of similar to the GNOME Tweak tool. But um, let's let's get de guest editions installed here because I would like a little bit more screen real estate to play with. So we'll see how easy this is oh there's a software run software I've never seen this before we're gonna click the run software button run I don't think it's gonna do anything oh authentication is needed it opened up a terminal okay interesting alright we've got auto run on Linux now um, of course you have to click it it's not actually auto run but um, it's just as easy to use. The terminal looks interesting. It's got this transparent background by default, and it's gray on gray. I can actually read the text. Um, I do want to turn that background opacity a little bit up. Oh, we can change to a light theme. No, dark theme. Yes. 
I can't find where, all right, profile preferences would probably be where it's at, yeah. Okay, colors, transparent background, we want it to be less transparent. Yeah, that's better. That is a lot more readable, all right. And press return, failed to set up service. Okay, well that did not work. All right, I've gone to the Solus website and found some dependencies that we actually need to install uh, that they recommend installing via command line on their website. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll try doing the guest editions thing again. So we'll minimize these, open up a new terminal. Okay, getting the hang of Budgie pretty quickly. So sudo eopkg install. EO package would be the package manager. Linux kernel, oh, well let's see what we got for our kernel. So uname dash r, okay, so not LTS. So sudo eopkg install Linux current headers. We'll also do, well, we'll do that first. See if that works. All right. Certainly not apt, certainly not Pac-Man, but fairly quick package manager, a lot faster than DNF. All right. Um, so there's an upgrade command, sudo eopkg upgrade. No packages to upgrade. All right. So that update that we did in the software manager did work. And if we open up the software manager again, then if we go to updates, software is up to date. Okay. So now we are going to do EO package install GCC, make auto config bind utils, bin utils, xorg server devel. All right. Extra packages, yes. So you wouldn't have to do this if you installed on a physical machine. That's why I wanted to do this on a physical machine. But when the physical machine starts, you know, having USB ports stop working randomly, then you'll probably get a better video out of it using VirtualBox. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty nice experience so far. Okay, and that's finished. Um, so next, we'll go ahead and it actually says it recommends clicking this run software button. So, um, well, let's get out of our terminal first. but. We'll click run software, run, nope, failed to start. All right, well, we're going to try restarting the computer. Virtual computer, that is. How do we restart? Power button here and restart. All right. Shut off pretty quickly there. Okay. Reading the hard drive. All right. Now, I don't think that guest editions have started yet. But we'll see in a moment. Still nothing. Okay. Um, we're going to go into this, run this one more time. The VirtualBox Guest Editions Installer. It's taking longer this time. So maybe that means it's working. Okay. Um, you may need to restart the Windows system or restart the guest system to enable guest editions. We'll go ahead and restart once again. Now this I don't like. I don't like how the menu pops up. Like I like the layout of these menus. This is not against the left side of the screen at the bottom and that doesn't bother me that much but with this smaller one it's more apparent that like the menu is in this this pop-up window. It's not just a freaking menu. It's got to have like a speech bubble around it. Not, uh, not a fan of that but that's how GNOME treats menus so. All right. Yeah, I'm really excited about once they port Solus, uh, once they port Budgie to Qt. I hope they still do that because the developer announced they were going to be doing that a little while ago. I, I haven't heard a lot about it since, but yeah, um, pretty excited about that. All right, I think the screen might have gotten smaller after restarting the computer with guest editions. Yeah, the screen's definitely smaller now. Uh, however, if we go to displays now, we should be able to actually make it bigger. Okay, it loaded there, and here we go. So resolution, here we go. So that looks nice. Now we have a widescreen and a little bit more screen real estate to play with. Um, so yeah, we can open up a couple more things here. I wasn't done taking a look at Rhythmbox. Looks like Guest Editions slowed down the machine if they use things starting up or any indication. So uh, Rhythmbox does come with a couple of plugins installed and enabled. Uh, so like Dbus interface, that's for keyboard, media playback controls, um, iPod support, MTP support for Android, all right. The Solus blog looks like the um, 
the home page in Firefox here, and I'm actually using Solus 3. Uh, this was just released on August 15th last month. So yeah, that's interesting. I could have sworn they used to have the taskbar at the top of the screen, so maybe that's what happened with Solus 3 got moved to the bottom. Um, and yeah, it is a, a rolling release, but they explain here why they're calling it a major version even though it's a rolling release. So this is Budgie 10.4 I'm using apparently. That's what I'm reading here. Yeah, let's see what HexChat is. I've never used HexChat before. Um, is this IRC? This is IRC, okay. Huh. So yeah, I'm, I'm not an IRC person. That was before my time, and even though I know plenty of people still use IRC, I just don't see the need to get into it. But yeah, that's interesting that it comes with an IRC client right there in the taskbar. I don't know if, if uh, new users are going to know what IRC even is. But yeah, we can open up our budgie desktop settings. Um, we can change the theme here. So Adapta is the theme that is on by default. We can change it to Adweta, which is GNOME's ugly theme. Man, that looks so bad. But yeah, Adapta looks a lot. That This is a really nice theme. Um, commend the Solus people for that. There's some variations on it here. Interesting. So there's a, a dark version right there. Okay, looks like the the ETA, the ADA version uses a little bit less space, which is what I would want actually. Okay, cool. All right, we can change our icon theme here once again. We can have super ugly Adweta icons from GNOME or we can have uh, looks like there's there's some dark theme icons. So see we changed it to the dark theme. The um, this icon down here got lighter so you can see it better. And as you can see, KDE's got some nice cursors because Solus is a GTK, the Budgie is a GTK desktop environment, but it does not use the Adweta cursor by default. It uses the the Plasma Breeze cursor by default, which if I uh, exit out to my host, you can see my cursor looks very similar to this cursor. I'm just using the lighter one so I can see it better with my dark theme. Oh, and then there's a dark theme option here too. So why do we have, we've got a theme up here and then you can turn dark theme on. But then if dark theme is off, if you change this to the dark theme, then it turns the dark theme on anyway. I don't know what that's all about. But yeah, we've got desktop icons on or off. Um, so by default, we can do new folder here. And it's going to put a folder right on our desktop, which is interesting. Um, is this GNOME files? Is this Nautilus? There's our menu. Preferences. I think that was the wrong button. About. Yes, this is GNOME Files. And GNOME Files is not my favorite. I prefer Thunar to it, actually, but understandable that that's what it ships with. Um, font, range fonts, windows, button layout. You can move the, the buttons to the left if you want to be like Mac OS. Um, I like the customizability there. Nice. You can have dialog boxes attached to the windows or not. That's interesting. That's pretty cool. So like in, in GNOME files, one of my pet peeves with it is that, um, let's say if I do new folder here, and then look, I can't move one of these windows without moving the other one. I've got a new folder window, it's stuck to the outer window, and it's just completely, you know, taking everything. We can actually turn that off in Solus, and now if I do new folder, bam, you can move this around. Wow, Solus actually, that, that is great, I didn't know you could do that. I, I don't think that's an option in GNOME, but that is very cool because that, that was one of my pet peeves with GNOME is a, a dialog box would pop up and I'd want to see what's behind it and I can't move it because moving it just moves what's behind it as well. That is very nice. Um, so this is definitely more customizable than GNOME. Automatic tiling, so that is this thing. Do we have corners? I don't see any corners. Um, but yeah, we do have full screen, left, and right although no corners. Disable unredirection of windows. We're not going to touch that. It says for advanced users. Uh, we've got panel options here. So you can actually customize your panel a little bit too. We can change the menu icon. I don't have any other icons on here right now. We can turn on compact mode. What does that do? Interesting. All right, so we can even have a, a one one column mode that's just got just got all of our apps in one long list here. Um, and then turning that off, yeah, we've got the categories. Show headers. All right, so that would be this up here. 
under all. We've got the categories showing up there as well. Um, I like all of this customizability. This is the kind of thing I really, I really do like this stuff. All right, so rollover is where if I, I I'm not clicking on these right now. I'm just moving my mouse. Um, I don't have to actually click on them. It's hard to show that on video. But if we turn that off, then you actually have to click on one of these to make it go there. I actually like that on. Well, maybe I'll turn that off. Maybe I'll turn off show headers as well. Because now it's all alphabetical. Okay. Yeah, I really I like this menu. This menu looks nice and it feels nice. Um, icon task list. Looks like there's no other options available for anything else here. We can change the position of that to the top. All right, and if we do that, then, you know, it's just on the top of the screen now instead of the bottom. And this is what I always saw when I saw screenshots of Budgie. So they must have moved it to the bottom to make it easier for Windows users. Um, now we can also do, I'm really interested. Okay. So that doesn't look too bad. I've always been interested in having a sidebar on the side of the screen. Um, but I've never gotten it to look. See, it, it, these icons are pretty squished down here. Um, but the menu looks pretty nice with the, the left aligned. and You can do it on the right as well. This looks a little bit more like GNOME, having it at the top. We'll leave it at the bottom default here. You can make it bigger or smaller. Cool. I like that. Automatically hide. So that'll automatically go away when you drag something down there. Yeah. I don't need it to hide. Transparency. We can have, okay, so now the thing's transparent, as you can see. It'd be nice if there was customizable transparency, so it's not just like completely transparent like it is now, but still cool that you have that as an option. And I think um, if we, yeah, maximize this, now it's no longer transparent. That's what dynamic means. Always is going to keep it transparent, which doesn't look very good. But yeah, we'll go back to none. Dock mode. Cool. Oh, yeah, we can, we can have it collapse in to make it take up not as much space. And then now if we full screen now, that looks like crap. But if you don't maximize windows often, then you can drag things down here and use a little bit more screen real estate. I don't need that. You can even make a new panel and start adding things to it. So we just added a panel at the top. Say I want places up there. Now we have a, a places menu at the top of our screen. We can make this one dock mode. Um, all right, so this is this is just opening up all kinds of possibilities. The fact that you can make your own panels that is very cool. I like that you can make your own panel. Uh, we got auto start. Okay, so just a, a very simple, easy to use auto start if you want to start up a certain program, which I do that. Um, for instance, on my computer here, for some reason, I need to open up the NVIDIA settings every time I restart my computer um, in order for my laptop screen to have dithering enabled. So I just have set NVIDIA config, the GUI, to open up by default, auto start every time KDE logs in. You can do that with Budgie as well. So what I'm getting here, what I'm sensing from this desktop environment, just from using it for a couple seconds, here's the this, this sidebar, which is cool. It's got a notification center. Uh, which is a lot better, 100% better than GNOME's crappy half notification area at the top uh, as part of the calendar, a lot better. Uh, we've also got a calendar here in the sidebar. You can adjust your volume right here on screen um, as well as change your output just on the fly and no pop-up menus needed. It's a sidebar. I really like that. Um, open up your settings right from the sidebar. You can even just turn on and off your microphone and stuff. Very nice sidebar. GNOME has been too simple for me. That's why I switched over to KDE. It hasn't always been too simple for me, but it's gotten to be too simple for me. Um, what I'm sensing from Budgie is that it's, it's sort of like GNOME, but it actually gives you more options. It doesn't give you as many options as KDE. It doesn't overwhelm you with options because some people are overwhelmed when they open up their settings center and have literally hundreds of options. This is still way simpler than KDE, but it is way more customizable than GNOME is. Um, you know, little things like like this dialog box being able to move around, like that brings files to be an actual thing that I would consider using, whereas I would never consider using GNOME files without a setting like that. Very nice. Um, yeah, I like the built-in theme they've got. I really do like the menu, and you know, taskbar is just nice and simple. The only thing I'm worried about with with Solus is software availability because if VirtualBox isn't in the repo, I don't know what all is going to be in the repo. Can we search Caden Live right now? 
Um, Caden Live is in the repo. It is version 17.08.1. Now, if I open up Caden Live on my Arch machine right now, we bring this over here. This is version 17.08.1. So this is the most up-to-date version of Caden Live. Now, if we install this in Solus, let's see what it does with theming because I've got a nice dark theme with my Caden Live. Of course, it's going to install all kinds of Qt dependencies, which is understandable. Um, but Caden Live is like one of my must-have apps. Like if you, if I if Caden Live doesn't work well on a distro, I'm not going to use that distro because Caden Live is what I spend most of my time using. But yeah, this this entire desktop environment feels like I I understand why people like GNOME, um, and this feels like something that I would be able to use with these customizations. And it, it's a lot simpler than GNOME. You know, I like the GNOME activities menu. I actually don't have a problem with GNOME's menu at all. But some people do, and this, this menu here, it feels a lot like the Cinnamon menu from Linux Mint, or um, like the classic Mate menu that you can also get with Linux Mint. That's really what it feels like. It feels like the Mate Linux Mint menu, but they've done it here in Solus, and it, yeah, it works very well. I do kind of wish that we could make it not look like this speech bubble. I wish we could have it flush with the side of the screen and the sidebar, and that goes for all of these menus here. But that's just a an aesthetic thing. See, if I right-click one of these, it, it's, it is flush with the panel. So that's an inconsistency, Gnome. What happened to all of your consistency that you seem to champion? So while that's downloading, we're going to go back to search. Um, how do we do that? Oh, we have links to the change logs here. And licensing licensing information right in the software center is cool. Ah, the back. See, the back arrow is way over here, above all of these global menu options. Then we've got a contextual option that, that doesn't make a lot of UI sense to me. Let's see. If we search Chrome, do we have Chromium and or Chrome in here? Is Chromium in the repo? No, it is not. Interesting. They don't ship Chromium as a web browser. I like that they ship Firefox, but very interesting choice. And I assume that Chrome itself, of course, is not going to be in there. No. Opera. They do ship Opera. So you can't get Chrome, but you can get Opera, uh, which is also closed source. So I'm not going to be using that. But are, for real, we don't have Chromium? No? Yeah, no Chromium. Huh. But there is Opera. Uh, Vivaldi? We do have Vivaldi. All right. So none of Google's browsers, but it's not a, a proprietary licensing thing because we've got Opera, we've got Vivaldi. How about Quepzilla? which is not going to be called Quepzilla for much longer, but all right, Quepzilla is in the repo. Now that's a Qt app. I'm not sure where it's getting these screenshots from. It's nice that it's got screenshots. All right, Caden Live is done installing. Uh, let's open up Caden Live and see how Qt apps work in here because this is a big deal for me. Caden Live. Okay, it's got a dark theme by default. Um, telling me we're missing some optional dependencies. We'll just click okay. All right. Well, that doesn't look doesn't look bad. It's certainly a dark theme. And what theme does Kate and Live think we're using? Default, which I guess is Breeze Dark. If we change this to Breeze Dark, does it look the same? Yeah. So it thinks that it's using. Yeah, this is the light. Yeah, we don't want that. Oh, and now I've broken it. Breeze Dark. There we go. So it thinks that it's using Breeze Dark right now. Now this does not look exactly like Breeze Dark on my machine. The scroll bar is kind of blocky. Everything's kind of blocky, really. Kind of hard to find some of the points you got to grab to do certain things. Yeah, they're, uh, it doesn't look exactly like Breeze Dark on my computer here. But, I mean, this isn't Breeze Dark. Like, look at these these tabs here. This is the soulless, and this is neat that they've attempted to do this. Um, see the, the indicator under Caden Live that shows that it's running? We've got indicators here that match in Caden Live um, to show which tab you're in. Now, I don't like that kind of indicator type thing. If we open up real Caden Live, look, this is what it's supposed to look like. It's got actual tabs, um, not like indicators. Let me get this out of the way. It's got actual tabs that you can clearly tell which one's open, whereas um, this is this is not Breeze Dark. This is the the GTK theme they've got, but they've managed to make it actually work in Qt. And it doesn't look horrible. Um, that looks, see this, I don't know if you can tell the difference on video, but just look at this icon, like hovering over these, you get rounded corners. Hovering over this, you get 
square corners and you don't get that light lighter background when you hover over it that's the kind of thing that it's like th th this points out to me that we're in a gtk environment when you have little things like some buttons not matching others of course the top bar doesn't match the toolbar here because colors are off between the, the gtk and qt theme here's another one where we've got nice looking button nice looking button and then the drop down looks like crap but this is way better than if you install Kaden Live on Ubuntu and try and switch it to the dark theme. Uh, this is way better than that. So I am I'm fairly happy with this implementation based on what I was expecting. Still not as nice as it is on actual KDE. But once again, I would actually consider using this. So that is very nice. Um, so back to the software center. We do have Pupzilla. Um, that is interesting. We'll install that just to get another QT example um, but let's see epiphany that I, I spelled that wrong a piff yeah we've got gnome web um, of course we're not going to install that because you know well no okay so there is a third party tab here I didn't see the third party tab so search I guess probably would not include anything in the third party tab all right and third party tab is broken until I resize the window there. So we have Android Studio, you can install one click Bitwig. Wow, I've got Bitwig Studio on my computer and it, it's kind of a pain to install it on Arch actually. Um, is this just really one click? It's a pretty big program, I probably shouldn't do that. I clicked cancel, what do you? Alright, so I clicked cancel and it's still loading. Um, so that's not great, but we do have Google Chrome in here, so that's where you gotta go if you want Google Chrome. Interesting they don't have Chromium in the repo, but we've got Skype, we've got Slack, I don't use that, but we've got it. we got Spotify, once again, I don't use it. WPS Office, I don't use that, but I know people who use all those things. Got a couple more instant messaging clients. Google Earth, that's interesting. It is very interesting that they've got um, one-click install for Bitwig Studio, because they only package for Ubuntu. I guess, it, no, Solus is not based on Ubuntu. So yeah, very, very cool, actually. Um, you cannot click on these to get any more info. All you can do is install them. Yeah, Bitwig's a really big program, so I don't want to one-click install that. We'll try Google Earth, though. And that's just kind of sitting there. Huh. But yeah, there's no network activity going on. I don't know if, if these... these I, it would be nice if these worked. Doesn't look like they work. Close it and open it again. Third party. If I click Bitwig... All right, I think I broke it, because it's not asking me for my password this time like it did last time. So I broke that, um, so there's still a couple more kinks that I need to work out. Um, still not, you know, perfect experience, but this is really nice. Um, I'm not going to be using it as my day-to-day my -day for the time being. I'm going to stay on Arch with KDE. Um, but yeah, next time I'm recommending a new user or distro to try out, um, or not a new new user, but like... You know, one of the people doing rolling release with me or something that know what Linux is, are ready to take a step beyond Ubuntu, but they're not wanting, like, Arch yet. This is a really nice option. I could very easily see this replacing Linux Mint for a lot of people because it's got a very nice Windows-like, easy-to-use controls. It's configurable, but not too configurable, just like Cinnamon um, Budgie is. And yeah, it's rolling release, so you get access to all of your updates um, as soon as the programs that you use are updated by their developers. Of course, one person controlling all of the packages, not um, the best situation in my opinion, but as long as that person can keep up with putting all the updates in the repo, then I could really easily see that working well. So yeah, very cool. I was happy to be able to try out Solus today. Um, definitely check it out. The website for it is solus-project.com. You can go there. Oh yeah, how's Quapzilla look? All right, so this looks pretty, this looks fairly nice. Um, once again, for a Qt app in GTK, fairly nice. So solus-project.com, once again, is the website. And don't have permission. I guess you need to type the HTTPS in or something. So their website could use a little bit of work too. See, people say that Solus is perfect. It's not perfect, but it is very, very nice. So yeah, try that out, solus-project.com. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below, uh, whether you're watching on nerdofthestreet.com or on a third-party video sharing website.
For now though, that's everything for this video. I've just taken a very thorough look at Solus 3 with Budgie 10.4. I'm Jacob Kaufman with Nerd on the Street. I'll see you guys later. Bye.